Hi folks, Howard Jones here. Welcome to this week's video. And um, what you see here is me sketching out uh, a scene. It is a place called Polpero in Cornwall. And it was, um, there's the photo, it was a uh, an old mill that's been converted into a, a pub uh, restaurant type uh, thing with these blue uh, parasols outside. Um, the light was a little bit flat, it was quite bright, but it was a little flat with not enough shadow for my liking, so you'll see me sort of add the shadow at the end of this. Um, but the challenge, this was a challenge, um, and the challenge was suggested by a, a fellow watercolorist friend of mine, um, who asked me if I'd ever painted on smooth surface paper. This is this would be hot press paper because I typically paint on um, NOT, uh, which is cold press paper, and uh, often um, I will paint on rough paper. And um, I've always, you know, felt that uh, smooth surface papers are probably best suited for illustration. Um, they can be good for very accurate type um, paintings, um, perhaps for um, people who, who paint um, botanical uh, subject matter, that type of thing. Anyway, this was the challenge, and I thought, what a great idea. So... Um, <laughs> It's because it's a smooth surface, I have to invent a lot of texture. So here's my first, this is speeded up obviously, here's my first attempt of creating texture on a flat surface um, in the sort of trees behind the building. And um, It was it it was quite tricky. I'm working wet in wet here, and my plan my plan was this: that I put on a lot of rich, um, heavy paint, um, and it which would which should allow me to um, create textures. So lift outs, sometimes just dripping and flicking water onto the surface to create um, the sort of texture that you'd find in. The, the foliage, the leaves of these trees. So at this stage it was going okay, I was quite happy with it. Um, it is surprisingly different and um, I just sort of kept to my usual remit. I, I didn't, I wanted to see if I could achieve this without too much change to my own personal technique. So I stuck with my approach, which is to suggest some basic detail. Um, so I'd sort of slightly un outlined the underhang of the roof on the building um, and any other sort of rough basic detail that I can see. I'm just going in here with warm and cool greens, mixing up the temperature in the greens. And the paper's just drying out. This is, as I say, this is this is speeded up, of course. Um, I like to paint fast, but even I'm not this fast. Um, uh, so, yeah, I'm just trying to suggest some texture now. I'm using a, a, a an oil painter's painting knife there with a bit of scraping. And one thing that's noticeable, I found that um, on smoother surface paper is that the paint will swim around quite a lot um, more so than if the uh, surface has has texture. The texture obviously sort of hangs on to paint, um, you know, cutting down to a certain degree the amount of movement across the surface. Whereas this this smoother surface um, paint is sort of tending to drift quite quite a bit more. Um, if you're watching this video of mine as a first time round, 
um, please consider subscribing to my, to my channel. I do upload these paintings twice a week at the moment, um, which I intend to do um, on top of my... I'm full-time uh, uh, watercolour painter, and um, so I'm, I'm just... Uh, I'm glad of any sort of uh, help in the form of uh, people subscribing just so that I can make it worthwhile me uploading, taking the time out to to upload these demonstrations and instructions, uh, instruction videos. So as I say, if you could s subscribe to my channel, that would be fantastic. And if you could hit the like button, um, that would be really good too. So I'm just lifting out now. I'm using a mop brush to lift out areas that are still damp. And you can just sort of see those textures in the in the tree behind there. A lot of that's been created by me dropping water off my fingertips. So I paint, um, I, I usually make the decision, I've got an idea in my head before I paint as to how tight or loose I want to paint because I do like to change from time to time depending on, depending on the subject matter. Um, I will paint some, some subject matter um, a bit tighter than this. Uh, it, I tend to sort of favour a looser style when there's uh w w when there's more abstract quality to the uh to the scene uh best way i can sort of clarify that what i mean is if i were t to be doing a, a busy street scene with lots of buildings lots of perspective um i'd probably lean slightly more towards a tighter style but um i i having said that i i i just like to mix it up a bit I believe that we should always paint um, to the mood that we're in, and sometimes in the mo I'm in the mood for painting very loosely, very expressively. Other times I feel the need to just to tighten up a little bit um, in order to, I suppose, retain the skills um, because the, uh, I, I'm I'm always a little afraid that if I don't revisit a bit of realism from time to time that I'll lose the skills um, even though I favor mostly um, no I, I certainly lean towards a, a loose style most of the time I favor the loose style um, but like I say I, I sometimes I sometimes will tighten up just so that I can stay in touch with um, the, the, the underlying drawing skills which is what you're seeing me do now they're not precise marks to indicate this or that, but they're, they're, they're the sort of marks that suggest the type of paraphernalia you'd find around these scenes. They might be just sort of wooden fences, they're benches that people sit at to have their meals and their, and their drinks. Um, so it's inferred detail, I like to refer to it as rather than sort of stating everything in a hyper-realistic um, way. So I sometimes paint looser than this. Um, I sometimes paint tighter than this. This is somewhere, somewhere in the middle of my range, I suppose. But as I say, the main challenge here, I just want to see what this is going to turn out like um, as it's been painted on a smooth surface. And I have that little shape down there in the bottom left hand corner of my photo which when I when I was weighing up um, painting this in the first place when I looked at the original photo there was I, I, there was just some cropped shapes to a bench and some chairs and I just felt as though um, had I included had I included those shapes 
I think it would have just looked a little bit strange um, and would have caused some um, confusion for the viewer. So I've, so I'm, I'm just going to play them down to something a bit more abstract by the time I've finished with the painting. So still looking now towards um, the light, or oh, going back, reconsidering the light conditions in this painting. And um, my blue parasols are quite soft of edge at the moment, so they probably need to be um, outlined uh, to give them um, to, to turn seventy percent of their edges or thereabouts, you know, seventy percent, sixty-five, whatever uh, percentage of the, the edges of those parasol shapes to be a little harder, uh, a little bit cleaner of edge. So that's the reason why you just saw me drying it off with a hairdryer so that I can cut around some of these shapes to redefine them a bit better. So I think I'm just mixing up a little bit of ultramarine blue and burnt sienna there. I think I'm just using a little bit of viridian green as well just to darken it. So I'm just putting in this darker tree so that I can get some tonal impact in my painting. I always look for this um, and sometimes I just feel as though this this has to be introduced. It's, it's really, I, I, f I feel the need to um, exercise the artistic license um, quite a lot um, and I think it comes from being uh, from living and painting in the UK because the, the the light in the UK even in summer even in a good summer can sometimes just be ambient rather than bright and um, uh, you know when you're up against those situations you have to invent and create the light because there's not always enough impact there because the the light isn't strong enough it's not to say we don't have lovely summers we do we really do um we have some lovely bright sunny um sunny summers but um a lot of the time as i say i find myself needing to uh, invent uh, oh, it's sort of invent it's it's par partly inventing and it's partly um, memorizing sometimes if I'm really lucky I'll get a good photograph when the Sun comes out and uh, it'll be just as I need it but that's quite rare um, uh, yeah, you know I know I, I know that there are some pretty famous historically some famous um, UK uh, landscape painters who um who when when you when you learn about them um have made comment about the need to memorize the scene when it comes to light so i hope you've uh, I, i've i've got it there to where I, i've basically decided that's that's a finished job and i've added the shadow as i say over to the over the house um if it, it is it any good? I mean, is it 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 was on hot press paper? Something I'm not used to. I'm not making excuses. I I just genuinely wanted you to see, um, perhaps what might occur. I want. I certainly wanted to see what would happen. Uh, um, you know uh, what the end result would be from working on a surface that I'm not used to working on. So uh, please. Feel free to comment, folks. Um, if you if, if you think it's noticeably different from my normal work, please drop your comments uh, below. I'd be really glad to hear um, anything you might um, f have uh, to say or think about it. Uh, until the next time, um, happy painting and see you soon. <laughs>